And how did you, from the very beginning, when you were a child, how did you, when did you start to, to listen to music or to sing music in a way that you thought that It was started quite late. Uh -huh. So in, when I was 18 years old, you know, I started to listen first to Beatles and then Pink Floyd and then Stevie Wonder and Elton John and all this. In that time, it was very new in Russia. It was like, they're coming like, it wasn't possible to hear by radio or TV, you know, so it's, it's just when some fans are meeting and just they have, I found this, this album, you know, so wish you were here me and found Pink Floyd, you know, let's listen tonight, you know, it was kind of secret meeting, you know, just to, to hear all this because in that time it was, when it was 18, art from bourgeoisie, you know, it, was, it wasn't so easy coming. And then uh, later I started, when I was already 22 years old, I started to learn folk songs. And then when I was 24, I was coming as a singer, you know, this, this, this stuff. And then over 30, I just got my so it was quite late. And you, but you have a master, what do you call it, in, in Tuva? Uh, I had a master, a really master who teach me. I was just, uh, trying to study everything myself by, by, by tapes. And only one thing what I can say that I had kind of consultants, like in Tuva, Zoya Kyrgyz. At that time she was just an uh, aspirant. Mm -hmm. Conservatory in Moscow, and uh, so she started in that time also to collect uh, different recordings with from me and to make a basic, uh, a basic te theory of, of our home singing. Uh, but sh she helped me a lot with this information, what what I had in that time. So uh, and uh, so as consultant you know, so in Moscow. I made very nice woman. Uh, she's uh, just she's just a teacher mm. for, for vocalists, but she teach me the basic uh, theory of, of folk singing. Let's say we were listening to different uh, uh, styles, for example, Russian, South, uh, from South uh, area, then North area, then. Ukraine, Belarus, Bulgarian, uh, Romanian, Gypsy songs, mm, even mm, they were trying to study something from the spirituals, from Mihaly Jackson. And so in that time we were starting already to, uh, to uh, discuss about uh, soul music, uh, for example, in, in, in America this kind of things in Mongolia, it's, I'm sure it, it, it is soul music because when they are singing, it's, it's really good, you know. And so she was trying to, to explain technically, as a singer to singer, the how it's working, you know, this, this emotion, how to hold emotion in sound. You know. And uh, of course, she was working with my voice because I had like four octaves, you know, large, <laughs> and I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't hold it. You know, it was too big, you know, and I hadn't uh, any imagination how I should work with it, you know. And this, all this, it's like, like acrobatic. You think you have to know how to 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 go. So, and then we were learning these songs, for example, from Tuva, from Mongolia, from Russia, from Ukraine. So we were just analyzing every melody. It's like this rally driving to know that this here is curve, just uh, do this, that change at one, uh, one di diapason, one uh, part of your diapason to another, in this way at something. It was also kind of, uh, kind of um, consult consultation. Uh, so I can say, it was very important for me 
not only to learn by 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 heart uh, all these ethnic sounds and all these ritual sounds from Siberia, but also to learn uh, like Russian singing, Bulgarian uh, kind of singing, and all this uh, stuff together. You know, because that later it will come. That later it is coming. I was just going on stage this uh, group three trio from Moscow, and it was a shock for them, for me too, because I was just, they just, they say, so in 15 minutes we will start, so do we have problem? Of course, we had four pieces, so first is slow, second is a little faster, so, uh, I have, but what theme and tonality this, uh, don't worry, just react, and I was reacting because I was, you know, uh, very nervous and oh, but it was just coming out all what all these years of working and discussing and all it was just coming out. So of course there is another side when you are we have too many uh, performances, especially for improvising. Like it's not good, and it's good to have like four, three performances in a month, but then it's necessary to stop. Because it's it it's coming as cliche. I learned that even free jazz, improvised music, how it, whatever it's called, very modern, new, but it has already cliche. So everybody has his own cliche about himself. I started to have my cliche about myself. And sometimes I'm walking in one circle already. So I'm not so so old. Mm to have that, so I shall try to be fresh every time, it's like to play every time like I'm playing last time and I'm pl it's my first performance and last performance to be, of course it's very difficult to hold. It. How do you prepare before a concert? Oh, it's different. Mentally and... Uh, so it's different, sometimes when it's long tour, I have no really time to concentrate. So I'm just professional, just coming, just uh, okay, what in the play with who I play, so what kind of stage just does it is okay. That's all. And just for the stage. But sometimes I have possibility to concentrate. It, it needs all day just to bring you on stage in this exact time and just to open this like barrier and just to to, to let run this river from you to the audience. Sometimes even I have no time to, to sometimes I need to have no time to, to warm up this one stage for an stage. It's also happening. But sometimes I have I have possibility to warm up to look for structures. Even to look for melodies, scales But before, it's the more a technical preparation than a mental preparation, or mental. It should be always there. You know. It's always you have to find at this point for what you are doing. That you know. it's the most difficult part because sometimes, especially now, I'm, I'm mostly I need to stay in the West and I'm visiting every two three months Russia. Then it's no question for me for what I'm doing in Russia. You know just to keep it on, the rolling on, because life is falling down. I never ask for money in Russia. I'm just playing because I know there's mm, some singers, but somebody has to do that, you know, to keep cultural life going on. So, but on West, it's, you know, I'm used already to this life when you have everything and everything you can go and buy in the shop, milk and bread. And so. Because in Moscow I had to fight for that, you know, for my bread and milk. So <laughs> here I don't have to fight. So. How is it possible for a, a, a girl, a woman from Tuva to make this career? I mean, it's not very usual. So, but, uh, you know, I had this, this question already. Uh, for uh, 
a magazine which called Position, and Pius Knussel was writing uh, this interview. He was interviewed. So, and uh, he asked me uh, about that, and he formulated and later very clearly because I was talking was very long, trying to explain. That, but he says very good that acting as Europeans and thinking as Oriental, you know, that's that's <laughs> yeah, that's exactly me. You know. That's but it's funny in this two years, last two years, I'm on West, and it's funny, I'm becoming to be more oriental in this time. Now, I, and I know exactly for what it is, and why it is, and how I want to do that, you know. And it is the, the, the oriental philosophy, and I know it's very deep in my blood, it's in my code, genetic code. And uh, mm, uh, of, co but of course, in, in daily life, I have to act and to, to be flexible, to, to, to work with all these papers. And of course, to, I have to learn English, so it's two years. So. Um, yeah, what do you say? You have to learn. I had to learn uh, English, so I will hope. I, I, I hope I will already maybe next year, next time I can already talk in German. <laughs> so uh, I had to learn all these all these things, you know, yeah. and uh, to have this all this calendar plan and uh, the schedule and everything. I, I had to learn it, but. Uh, Basically, the uh, way of, of, of being on stage is, 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 is oriental, let's say. I, 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 I started now to, 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 to read more books about Buddhist philosophy. And for example, next project, which is in May, will be this, uh, uh, will be this, uh, three oriental musicians more improvisers. The Japanese piano player Masahiko Sato. He's quite well known in Japan and one of the best piano players and composers in Japan. And Kao Tefan, he's from uh, North Korea, saxophone player. He's in real like Evan Parker. So using sounds and and, uh, and percussionist from Friends, but he is half Vietnamese. His name is uh, Le Quan Nin. Very good musician, also, and me myself. So it will be quite interesting quartet for uh, and this project called Oriental Contemporary Music Project. And uh, so we hope that in May we will have tour. So and the basic. Uh, concept of this project is uh, four uh, hieroglyphs from Japan, from uh, from Zen Monastery in Kyoto. And if you will translate to, to English, it means I know only enough. This is the way of uh, Buddhist philosophy, to, to learn not as much your head can hold, but to learn as much your heart. Yeah, so that's the that I, that I, meaning that I cannot know more than I, my, I can learn through my heart. However, mm. so uh, all four musicians are uh, used to improvise music, and of course they can write and they can compose too. But they are improvisers too. Do you think that? Um you you're taking lots of sounds from the shell